I have owned and used an M1 Mac Mini for six months now, and in those six months the world has gone from a locked up hell back to a mobile user's dream. So in a world where it's all about mobility yet again, does the stay at home nature of the Mac Mini work? Hey guys, welcome back to the channel if you're new here, my name is Yoni, I'm a software web developer, and today we are going to be talking about the M1 Mac Mini after six months of almost daily use, and whether or not a desktop computer such as the M1 Mac Mini is needed in a world that's gone back to being a mobile. One of the first things to understand about the M1 is the M1 isn't just the CPU. The M1 is a combination of the GPU, CPU, RAM and much more into one package. With the introduction of the M1, all anyone could talk about was the speed of the M1. And well, the M1 is a speedy beast. But I'm sure you already knew that though, as you've already seen in every other M1 Mac Mini review. So instead of talking about what you already knew, today I'm going to be covering what you didn't already know, how the M1 fits into my workflow and how it's been benefiting me over the past 6 months. Before I get into the meat and potatoes of this review, I'm first going to talk about how exactly I use the M1 almost every day. Every day after I wake up, one of the first things I do is turn on my M1 Mac Mini. And unlike my MacBook Pro, while it's used to about taking a couple minutes to wake up, the M1 just wakes up in probably under 2 minutes I'd say. Once the Mac Mini is woken up, I log into my computer and I move all my windows to correct virtual desktops as I am a huge advocate of virtual desktops. Each day, year, month, all of those have multiple different tasks. There is never a single set of tasks for each day, but there's always multiple tasks I always find myself repeating, such as coding, writing, photo editing, video editing, general productivity, all of those tasks you might expect to be doing on a daily basis. All these tasks on my old MacBook Pro which just made the computer hot and laggy and I'm glad to report back to you after doing all these tasks on the M1 Mac Mini after 6 months I've not noticed any lag to be honest on the M1 Mac Mini compared to my MacBook Pro of yesteryear. Even when I play Minecraft with medium settings the Mac Mini manages to achieve 230 plus FPS on Minecraft which is pretty astonishing compared to my MacBook Pro that would achieve 100 FPS at low settings. Yes, yes, I'm sure you've all already seen the amazing Geekbench results the M1 gives. Those are just numbers, it doesn't actually show how the computer performs in a real task in the real world. So how does the computer actually perform in the real world? Recently, I've been working on a lot of TypeScript and Node.js applications. My coding sessions on my MacBook Pro were just hot, laggy and loud due to the fan noise the MacBook generated. But now with the M1, I don't notice any lag when coding. In fact, the other day, I had a WebSocket server open, two clients connected to the socket, 20 tabs open in Safari, music streaming in the background, and probably around 10 other applications open. And the Mac Mini still wasn't hot or even had any fan noise at all. How crazy is that? I'm not from a MacBook Pro, that sounds like a jet engine of one tab open. I do quite a bit of editing for this channel, my Instagram stories, and even my Instagram reels. When editing on my Mac Pro, it just lags a lot. I just can't really move clips around or anything on the timeline about the MacBook just lagging and freezing getting well the spinning beach ball of doom. But on the M1 chip it's just as smooth as butter, not a single issue and I've never even heard the fan noise kick on when editing. Photo editing is probably one of my most common tasks I do. I do normally edit all my photos on my iPad but when I do edit the occasional photo on my Mac Mini I'd always notice the speed and performance increase over my MacBook Pro when editing on there. One of my most common tasks for any computer I'm on is of course writing. As well I write for school, this channel, my Instagram, my blog coming soon and everything all revolves around writing. Therefore writing is definitely one of my most common tasks I do on a computer. So as I'm sure you've gathered throughout watching this entire video, the M1 works with writing amazingly, not a single issue when writing. And if there was an issue with writing I'd be worried because there is an issue in video editing but there would be when writing. <laughs> Of course, in general productivity, the computer also performs amazingly. All tasks such as email, browsing the web and more, the computer just flies through like it's nothing. And compared to the painful, laggy experience that was my MacBook Pro, it just feels like leaps and bounds ahead. The thing with the M1 chip is that it's not x86. The issue of this is that all apps on macOS are built around working on x86. This is where Rosetta 2 comes into play. You see, at this point, most apps have definitely been translated to the ARM instead of x86, but there are still some of the older apps that don't work properly in M1 and still only work with x86, and this is a huge issue sometimes. Rosetta is pretty impressive because it's translating the app on the fly, and some of these apps are still faster than they were ever on Intel on ARM, and they're being translated on the fly, not even natively running on ARM, which just goes to show how impressive Apple's M1 chip is. The question is though, should you even care about this computer in a world that's gonna use to being mobile again instead of being stationary at home? 
and should he make hair products compete to any M1X or M2 Mac Mini Pro, it's just around the corner of what we know of. And the reason we know that is because of Mark Gurman's amazing report yet the other day. I mean, look at this. Look at that title. Compared to the M1 MacBook Pro, the Mac Mini has the exact same specs. So why shouldn't I just get a MacBook Pro? Well, after six months of having a separate computer and desktop, my life has just become so much easier, to be honest. As I don't have to ever worry about unplugging my MacBook when I'm out for more than an hour, as last time I did that, my logic board fried when it was plugged into my whole setup, because apparently that's a normal thing to happen. Thanks Apple, appreciate that one, at least it was a free replacement. During quarantine, I didn't have a computer for one month. It was my only computer I had, unless my, other than my iPad. But my iPad, can't really do everything I could do on my MacBook on there. That was fun Apple. Real fun. But this does bring me to another reason why having two computers is so great. If one computer is to break, such as if my MacBook's to bake, at least I still have my Mac Mini at home so I can get all my computer tasks done. Or if my Mac Mini is to break, at least I set up my MacBook to get all my computer tasks done. Either way, it's very rare that both my computers are going to be broken at the exact same time. Look, my whole argument of why we can afford to have two computers, the reason should, it just because it makes everything so much easier. You most likely never need to worry about not being with a computer. You don't need to even remember to take your MacBook out of your bag if you don't want to. And you don't have to remember to unplug it from your setup after an hour when you're not using it. Look, even in a world moving slowly back to mobility, having two computers, one for power at home and one for the road, just makes sense to me. Ignoring the terrible obnoxious name, the M1X or M2 Mac Mini Pro, it's just around the corner of what we've heard. So should you even still buy the M1 Mac Mini? Uh, the current Mac Mini is great and I've never noticed a single issue. I don't need to really hold out for the M1X or M2 Mac Mini Pro if you, well, are a professional. So how do I know if I'm a pro? Well that's just it folks, to all of you who are asking yourself that question, you most likely aren't a pro, to all of you who already know the answer that you are a pro, you most likely are a pro. You see, the amazing thing of the M1 Mac Mini is that it's the cheapest M1 Mac, yet again, scratch that, it's the cheapest Mac in the lineup, coming in at $700 for 8GB of RAM and 256GB of storage. Which, for all of you folks out there with basic computer needs, this computer will get you through the next 5, 6, 10 years probably completely fine, not having to worry about a single issue most likely. Even I, someone who has kind of pro needs, this computer gets me through the day completely fine about any issues. And do I sometimes wish I had more RAM and storage? Yeah, sure, but who doesn't wish they had more of something? When you don't have it, you always want it, that's just how things work. And if you really can't live with 8GB of RAM and 256GB of storage, you can always upgrade to 16 gigs of RAM and 2TB of storage for only $1,700, which seems like quite a lot. But considering regular Apple tax on RAM and storage, that's a really good price actually. Overall, in a world that's going back to mobility, a machine like the M1 Mac Mini still makes sense, and once you factor in the M1 chip, this machine is one of the best deals in tech you can buy right now. No other manufacturer is able to get a computer this low price, $700, for this amazing amount of performance. If you enjoyed this video, then I'm sure you'll love my M1 Mac Mini review. Thank you for watching and see you later.